It's very positive. And I, I we started, it you know, really started this weekend in earnest with Quiet Place 2. I was there. It's a, you know, it was great. The lights went down. Uh, we all were together watching that movie in a dark theater in a completely differentiated experience. It's, look, at home's great, but, you know, we're in a battle against the couch. But it's a, we have a whole, we bring a whole set of weapons into that battle that are much different than that you're not looking at your phone, you're not looking at your tablet, the lights are, the lights are out. You've got a big screen that's enveloping you. You've got sound, or in the qu- place of, in, in Quiet Place, no sound. I mean, it was, you know, you, you can't replicate that experience. And so that's what we, that's what the studios see in theatrical. That's what we see in theatrical. You know, it has a place in the ecosystem. It's. Uh, I, I think this choice of theatrical versus streaming is a is a false choice, uh, because it would be like it would be like the deli owner saying, "Hey, I just invented pastrami. Let's can corned beef." Right. That I, make any I, sense. I, yeah, you know, no. It, I mean, <laughs> I understand part of the ecosystem, but is the ecosystem as large as it once was? I mean, that seems hard to argue, particularly given these windows that the major studios are now allowing for the showing of the movies in theaters like your own as opposed to putting them on their directly direct to consumer uh, platforms that have become so important to their growth. Well, look, you know, look, pe- movie studios have been putting, you know, movies direct to their consumers, not through their platforms, but through other platforms for years. So that's nothing new. You know, this is streaming is more the, the, the linear battle than it is against theatrical. But, yeah, will Windows will Windows change things? Sure, on some level. But, you know, when one door closes, so to speak, one may open because as certain windows shrink, other content providers uh, might show up to the party and want to release their films in theaters where they can highlight their product in a way that, you know, you think about it. I, I think a lot about what happened, what's happened with TV. And it's really hard to get those. What are we all going back to as a world? Friends and The Office, all those shows where everybody had to watch them all at the same time. And they were in, they had their own highlight. You know, in the theater business, we can only play a limited number of products. You know, sometimes unlimited choice is its own, you know, its own, uh, punishment in a way, or prison, you know, that we have limited choice. You can only watch a certain thing. You can see that it is highlighted, uh, you know, at, for, for the studio to highlight their product. And then ultimately the streaming service, because, you know, movies are not widgets. People seem to, they very quickly go content, like as a widget, you know, if the, you know, like, it's not like you can change the flavor of the toothpaste and get more customers there. You know, if somebody wants to see star Wars, they're going to Disney plus. So if it starts in the theaters and then becomes exclusive on Disney plus, or Quiet Place exclusive with Paramount, or F9, your product, exclusive on Peacock one day, you know, the customer has to go there to see it. It's not like the customer can substitute. It's not a substitutable product. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.